that's another reason to, uh, you know, people might ask why I initially cut them this long. It just gives you something to hang on to <laughs> when you're when you're doing this. It just makes it, you know, it's just practical. It just gives you a handle. So you got a handle here. You got a thumb here. So you get a bit of. Hey, it's Greg here at MaritimeGardening.com and I'm processing some of my garlic here and I thought I would show you uh, what I do to uh, preserve the garlic. I mean, there's lots of people that braid them and do different things like that. Uh, I, I grow hardneck garlic, they're really not conducive to braiding. And I also live in a place with a very humid climate. So I find it a challenge to get these dried out. And if you live in a similar place, you probably noticed that if you... Uh, if you store them with this uh, roots on the bottom, sometimes uh, mold or mildew will appear on them. So I'm just going to explain my general process for getting these things dried out because you got to get them dry if they're going to keep. Um, step one is I, I, I pick them and I cut them off like this and I just leave them out in the sun for you know a few hours. Let's say I pull them in the morning and I just spread them all out in the sun for till lunch. At lunch time I just quickly rip the with my fingers rip the uh, roots off and I cut it about you know hands width long and I spread them all out on a piece of cardboard on the floor of my gardening shed here and then after about a week I come back and what I do is I take a, uh, a knife and I very carefully uh, cut this you gotta have a really sharp knife for this but I, I, I cut the root part off the bottom because that's what harbors moisture, right? So I cut that off and make it nice and clean, almost like the way they look in a grocery store. And then I'll uh, cut it off a little bit shorter, right? And then I leave them, well, spread them all out on something like this, this is a barbecue grate that we took over our fire for barbecue and shish kebabs and stuff like that. But uh, something where the air can get underneath, right? I just lay them out on that and leave them for another week. Uh, somewhere out of the sun with a degree of airflow that's uh, you know not in full heat sort of thing. I find my, my shed seems to work fairly good for that. It's got better flow the airflow than my garage, generally speaking. Um, tends to be a bit drier here. Um, so uh, vents in the ceiling and stuff like that. So uh, that's my general process. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is just uh, bring this up a little bit closer to the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so here I've got the uh Garlic clove is a good good one, maybe one for seed. And uh, yeah, just very carefully. Notice how I got my I haven't got my thumb where the knife can get it. I got it below profile, so if the knife comes past it's it's gonna miss my thumb. Right? If it's here it's, it'll get it. Have it sort of I don't know how to, how to show the that on camera, but it's that's a better way of looking at it. It's it's below the profile. Right? So it's just I mean, for people that use knives all the time, they know exactly what I mean, but it's just something you have to discipline yourself to, and then you you run, run way less risk of uh, cutting yourself when using a knife, right? All right, just give it a little rub all the way around. Don't worry about the dirt and stuff like that, as long as it's dry, right? Then you just cut this a bit, cut it a bit shorter. And you can use uh, snips for that, but that'll work just fine. Yeah. That's it. And I spread them all out in the grate. So I thought I'd just do a fast-forwarded film of me doing this, <laughs> so you can get a sense of how long this takes. I got maybe uh, over here, uh, oh, I don't know how many, maybe uh, 80 garlic. So I thought I'd just do a fast-forwarding of that. I got to do it this morning. This is the last of my garlic that needs to be processed. I've done everything else.
Uh, just a few more pointers on technique here. Um, as you go and as you get sort of used to doing this, you, you can you're, you're kind of going by feel rather than by sight. But the the angle of your knife should be not pointed in but out. You're basically cutting away from the garlic, and that's made that's facilitated by the the contour of the bottom of the garlic. It's it sort of points towards the root anyway. So you just put your blade flat against the bottom of the garlic and draw it like that. And again, I'm doing this because all that um, root captures the uh, moisture that's in the air. That's another reason to, uh, you know, you know, people might ask why I initially cut them this long. It just gives you something to hang on to <laughs> when, you're, when you're doing this. It just, it just makes it, you know, it's just practical. It just gives you a, a handle. So you got a handle here, you got a thumb here, so you got a bit of counter, you know, cantilever. It just makes it a lot easier to uh, manipulate the garlic, right? So once you, as you can see in the fast forwarded thing, once you get going, you get you get a feel for it, and uh, it goes pretty quickly. Uh, I really, I look forward to the day that I can uh, have my kids do this. <laughs> I don't have to do it anymore. Anyway, that didn't take long at all. Um, I'll have to check uh, when I'm editing this to figure out how how long it took to, to process those, but I, I'd say it felt like five minutes to me, maybe maybe less. I don't know. I, I did it as fast as I could. Um, anyway, this the next step is to put them like this, right? That way the air can get underneath them. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I'm just getting a sense of how much there is per row. Uh, people ask me about saving, uh, you know, saving garlic for seed. I do that, and uh, and I've been been doing that. What I do is I like if you look at all the ones that I have laid out in front of me here. Oh, you can see them. Um, but uh, in this whole row here, I got two two ones that are really good size, maybe uh, three inches across, right? And so these are the ones that I would put aside for seed garlic. And the sort of smaller ones like this, or anything smaller than this basically, is food garlic. Uh, you you want to eat the big fat ones, I know, but if you want to year after year after year get uh, a good uh, good result, uh, you, you save the big ones and you plant them. Another thing you can, you can tell by looking at these, they're not like perfectly white, like the ones in the store. And, and that's because I'm not trying to sell them, right? I, I really don't, um, I have no interest in that sort of thing. People are, you know, people say to me all the time, oh, why don't you sell this at a farmer's market? Why don't you sell that? You grow so much, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I've never had any interest in that. Um, I, I've, for me, I've done the numbers and uh, I just, uh, and I know there's lots of people out there that uh, make money doing this, but uh, I've always felt that the, the money I save by not having to buy food is far greater than the money I would make from selling things. I mean, I did a podcast on this once. I think I called it uh, sustainability. I can't remember what the, maybe it was called uh, self, self-reliance. self I'll put the name of it up there. But um, I, I went through the mental experiment of uh, how large my garden would have to be if I was going to feed my entire family with just the garden. And I worked out that my garden was just large enough to feed me barely <laughs> for a year uh, so I'm, I'm growing just enough food to keep me from starving to death for a year so that's really not enough to feed my family so uh, why on earth would I sell that right um, unless you were growing some sort of high value crop that's you know so high in value that you can you know turn around and, and use that money to purchase other things um, uh, but for me, for the time I put into it, and the you know the inputs and all that sort of stuff, it's, uh, and I know there's going to be people disagree with me, but uh, you know I, I grow a garden about the same size as Ruth Stout. She grew a garden for her own food, <laughs> and uh, you know the garden I have isn't large enough to quit my job and sell garlic. I grow, I think I grew something like 200 garlic this year, 
what do you got? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65. This is, let's say, 70 garlic here, right? And I probably grew 200 heads of garlic, 250 heads of garlic, something like that. Uh, it's not enough to quit your job over, <laughs> you know. And we easily use this much in a year. We eat a lot of garlic. It's, it's good for you, and especially when you grow it yourself. Uh, this is a fraction of it. So this is maybe uh, one quarter of the garlic. Um, about a quarter of the garlic I grew this year, maybe. Uh, maybe maybe a bit less than that. Um, so, yeah, we've got a lot of garlic this year, but we're going to eat it all. I mean, last year I grew 150 heads of garlic, and it was all gone by, I think, the end of January, maybe sometime in early February. Uh, my goal is to grow so much garlic that I'm just running out of it when the scapes appear on my next year's garlic, which usually happens in, in May. So, uh, anyway, just a few thoughts on that. Um, the garlic doesn't have to be perfectly white if you're not, not selling it, you know, as long as, the main thing is to get the garlic to a point, uh, and, and this is more of a concern people live in really humid areas like where I am, where you have like fogs and mists and things like that, um, unless you've got some sort of, you know, air conditioned, sealed, controlled environment, but I mean, I, I just either keep the stuff in my shed or in my gardening shed, uh, so the, the ambient air is basically the, the environment I'm, I'm working with here. And if you've got any sort of furry hair, any sort of organic furry hair stuff, <laughs> right, uh, that tends to attract moisture. And it ca it'll cause uh, mold and mildew and things like that. Things you don't want uh, if something you're trying to save something to eat it or if you're trying to save your garlic for seed garlic. All right, so I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. <laughs>